Hello, boys and girls. It's Tuesday. You know what that means. It's the Tuesday-ish club. That's right. We're back in the player lounge where you get to be a fly on the wall. And then you get to ask the men who've worn the shirt and fought for the badge some questions. Here we go, people. It's another live edition of the Highbury Squad. Mind the gap between the train and the platform. Please stand clear of the discussion doors. The next stop is Highbury Squad. That's right. It's the Tuesday-ish club. Of course, we're back and we hope that you are having a good day. Let's remove this. Welcome back to the podcast, my brother from another mother, Mr. Super Kev, Super Kevin Campbell. All right. How are you, Soph? I'm doing great, actually. I'm doing really good. Before I let you know um, about my morning, of course. At ease, squaddies. Good to see you all back. Good to see everyone back. I think everyone's really excited about this Champions League game. Is that right? The Man United lost to some young boys? <laughs> yes, some babies. Yes, it can happen. <laughs> it, it can happen. Uh, good evening to the usual suspects in the house. Welcome back. Kev, you're going to be really, really um, proud of me. So I've been working out every morning on this trip. And just when I think I can't take any more, I'm like... Super Kev would say one more lap. And then after I do that lap, Super Kev will be like, if you can do that lap, you can do a couple more. That's right. All up here. <laughs> so I'm doing some, uh, I'm doing some super training out here. And I just wanted to say that your, your uh, voice is in the back of my head just when I, I think I'm ready to give up and I've done I, enough. I'm going to get you a burpees next. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, um, the Tuesday-ish club awaits the arrival of Mr. David Hillier. The last time we heard from him, it sounded like his machinery was going to explode. A little bit like a bit, little bit like the Arsenal fan base after the Brentford <laughs> yes. game, Kev. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, look, uh, how, how are you? Game was great last night. Good stuff. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. Everyone, I went to watch everyone sent I'll... Tyrese. Yeah, sent sent him well yeah. wishes, Kev. Yeah, went went to see my boy play for his first game after nine months. Um, it was it was special to see him, to be honest. And uh, you know he's worked ever so hard to get himself in a position um, to play. He played. He done very well. Looked pretty sharp. Obviously, knock a little bit of rust out as well, but. Um, yeah, very good. He had, he had no problems. He was only supposed to play 45. He played an hour. And um, yeah, he's, he's very happy. He said it was, it was a privilege to be on the pitch, he said. So oh, that tells you everything. At, at 21, you know what I mean? It's a privilege. So that was nice to hear. Listen, uh, it's brilliant stuff. And to, to see him back playing, I can't imagine how great that felt. I saw the interview he did for the channel as well afterwards. And you know, so mature, so, you know, handled the situation so well. Coming back from that injury is not easy. And, you know, um, he was on a high when that was happening. He was saying Stoke was second. He was flying high. Yeah. Um, so he'll be back there. But uh, good stuff. It was a great way to start the week, Kev. We missed you yesterday. We had the ref on. Um, we missed you. I, I, I know you had the ref on. I, I, I took a sneak... <laughs> I did take a sneak peek, but obviously I couldn't really get involved because you know why. <laughs> but I saw the ref, and as soon as I saw the ref on, I just thought, oh, I wish I was on with him. <laughs> it was a good conversation. Now, I'm sure you'll be back for part two. Um, it's, I find it interesting, Kev, to get the perspective of non-Arsenal fans because we get stuck in our bubble so much. And I did WhatsApp you after the game, and I said, man, you know... I, I, I gave Ben White a compliment and I've been absolutely ripped to shreds. How dare I, Kev, you know, compliment a new signing? Shame oh, on me. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. But you did say could. Yes, could. But And here's the thing. People are ready to kill you and they don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this is ridiculous. People don't know how, he's, how good he can be. But I, but I tell you this much. 
Sophie. I tell you this much. On the ball, he is quality. Real yeah. quality. I mean, I, I agree. And I think, you know, we've we've had these conversations about we don't know how I think patience is going to be important. And, and, and everyone says Arsenal fans should be patient, I think, because we've been patient for a long time. But I do think that this team deserves a chance, you know, to to kind of find their path and their way together. I wanted to ask you um, a really important question, Kev, because everyone keeps talking about how they they made um, Arteta made adjustments in the second half. Can you talk me through that a little bit? And I think we got Hilsey in now. Welcome back. Look, how's did you you didn't explode? You all right? You all right, Pop it. Nice working. one. Is you giving can you it hear me? <laughs> can hear you, Hilsey. Can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you, but I can't hear you through my headphones at the minute. Hold on a second. Let me sort this issue out. Carry on, and you'll just, you can have my picture on the screen if you like while you do it. All right, you can hear, right. you can hear, um, you can hear us. this. Uh, the, yeah, us. If if you can hear us, if I take them off. Uh, that's fine. You sound great. Yeah, you sound yeah, fine. Echo. Is that right? You look no. very sophisticated with your glasses on. By the way, look at you, eh? No, <laughs> he's trying to very take them off. <laughs> Why'd you take them off? I just told you you look sophisticated. You don't want to be sophisticated. Shiny. I look shiny. Shiny. I, uh, listen, talk about shiny. I've been in the heat today swimming and stuff, so I probably look like a shiny shiny toy. Hopefully it's a... It, look, look at you guys there. Not as shiny as these days. I always like to show these pictures just no, before we You know we what started. was shiny? What was shiny before we got our mitts on <laughs> it? That, that trophy. That, that, trophy. <laughs> that trophy was shiny, then we got our grubby mitts on it. <laughs> Definitely. You, Definitely. you two and the rest of the boys absolutely destroyed that trophy that night, didn't you? Let's be honest. Right, let's get stuck into this because we got a hard stop at nine o'clock today, okay, you guys? Um, Hilsey and Kevin in the house. I started off by saying I've got an agenda for you, but I wanted to get the game out of the way from the weekend because I saved the tactical you know, conversation uh, for you. To, to do with you guys. Second half, everyone kept talking to me about the adjustments and we were so much better and uh, the 4-3-3. Three, three. I'm going to start with you, Kev. Can you talk me through that a little bit, what you saw from the game that you felt? We did the, the player ratings, but with you and Hilsey together and having had some days to digest the performance, was the second half so much better? And if so, why? And what was the tactical change that got everybody a little bit hopeful? Yeah, I, I just thought, listen, there were spells in that second half where Norwich really dominated the ball. But I thought our shape was pretty good. Our, 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 our overall shape of our team, which tends to sometimes get disjointed, we were, we were a lot better, I thought. And I think the way we used the ball, obviously, uh, and the way we, bro we broke uh, against your position was excellent. Is that to do with us or is that to do with them i've got to give us some credit on this one sophie because we've seen us not take the game to teams we've seen us not be able to respond we've seen us not really be able to adjust as well and you know what actually helps it helps where your striker can pick the ball up from the halfway line and outrun the defense that puts them on the back foot as well and mm. gets you up the pitch so i, I think the personnel helped um, I think our mentality helped on the day. And uh, I, I honestly think the fact that our striker, star striker, was willing to do some real hard yards at the top end of the pitch really made a difference for us. Uh, yeah, Lone Star talks about shape, stability, structure. has been going on about that since yesterday as well. Heelsy, I think you did the commentary for the game at the weekend, did you not? Yeah, yeah, I watched it and did the commentary. Um, I, was, I, was, I was pleased. I was, I was obviously... You know, three points is is what the team needed. It was it was so needed. You could see it in their faces that from the start of the game they they went out to get the points, but they still for me they still fluctuated a little bit. You know, fifteen minutes of domination, let the other side creep back in. Um, but but I've got to say, for the sake of some fantastic defending from Norwich at times, the blocks. Um, I think it was is it Brandon Williams? I mean, yeah, he was good. Back, huh? he, was, he just. You know, there was three or four blocks, tackles, and, um, you, you know, I think it, the confidence would have come earlier in the game had we got a bigger a lead. Goal. Got mm. a goal. You know, got in front earlier. Earlier, yeah. But it did take the changes in the second half and a little bit of a formation change. But I think the formation change was based on, like what Kev said, it was it was great forward running by Ober in that game. 
I've got to say, I've, I watched him carefully, Kev, because, mm -hmm. you know, we've had our discussions about him and yes. about him switching off and going out for periods and being happy to sit on the sidelines. But he didn't do that this this weekend. And, mm -hmm. I, and I would have given him probably, and, and I know there's been a little discussion on Twitter about whether he was mad at a match, but I probably would have given him it, you know, because he showed a lot of character and he, and he, and he, he led the team a bit. Mm -hmm. He gave the ball away a few times. I think yeah. Maitland-Niles struggled. I've got to say it. I think he struggled. And I think when when he moved out of the midfield, it made a difference. Um, just, just I don't know whether it's confidence with him or, he, you know, I, we don't know what's going on there. But I, I was overall, I was happy. I was happy with the win. I was happy with the changes that the manager made. I think he, he staked a claim for his place for the next game, the manager. And that's, <laughs> I, that's what I think he can do at the moment, to be honest with you, because I think he's walking a tightrope. So, David, do you think it really changed? Because Kev and I talked about Aubameyang right after the match when we did our post-game show and player ratings, and we said it's probably the most energetic we've seen him in an Arsenal shirt for a long time. It felt like he had a bit more of a leadership chip in him. It seemed like he put the team on his shoulders. He didn't stop running. And when he wasn't, um, when he didn't have the ball, he did a lot off the ball as well. But Mark saying here with regards to the subs and from what you saw when, when you were commentating on the game, party in a Millsmith row, do you think that's... When things change, Kev was talking about parties past yeah. that played a lot in the goal. Is is Definitely. that the difference? Because because Smith Rowe's mobility across that front line causes problems, and he came on and and he drifted across, didn't he? Picking up and laying, mm -hmm. doing his little one touch layoffs, opening the space up, and doing what he did, play some nice little passes in. Definitely made a difference, but I can't under I'm not going to undervalue the work that the that, that other players did to get the team to that position. They did try and push. But like I say, those little periods when Norwich crept back into it just still gives you that little bit of doubt about there. There's that fragility there. So would those play? Yeah, if those players had started from the beginning, it may not have been there. We may have got that goal, early goal, and we may have tranced all over them. Um, David, do you... Did, 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 Oba, did, sorry. Yeah, go on. No, that? carry on. Yeah, I, yeah, I yeah absolutely. Oba's, for me, I liked his, the purpose of his runs. Mm. Not just that he, he's always energetic, you know, when he's running back. We see him in even the games when he plays bad, he runs back and tackles and, you know, it, he'll run, he don't mind running 40, 50 yards at times. Mm -hmm. But he had purpose in his runs. He was, he was telling the players, I want the ball, which we haven't seen him do for a while. That's mm -hmm. what pleased me. I, I, you know, I, I completely agree with you on, on that front. Um, can we just talk, because I want to get into some other subjects with, with you guys. I don't want to just focus on this game, but because you were commentating on the game, I do want to get a couple of your takes. Maitland-Niles has tried to make his case in that midfield. The last time you were on, we talked about his Instagram post. We talked about the fact that, you know, yes, he deserves the opportunity. Were you surprised when the sub came that he took uh, Laconga off and he didn't take... Niles off or in in essence bringing on Emil Smith Rowe and party he had to make that switch so Niles can move out of that midfield position because to me I think we're all excited and waiting to see Sambi and party together yeah well I, I think I, I called it on the on the um the commentary actually I'm not I'm not singing my own praises here but as as like my co-commentator Dan Roebuck the, the, the actual commentator said to like called called the substitution and he was like why is he doing that why is he you know, and I said, I reckon he might be moving Maitland-Niles out to right back mm -hmm. and taking off Tommy Yasu because he might, you know, he's had, he's had a great game, but might be tiring a little Starting bit. Don't want to overdo yeah. it with him. Yeah. Um, so, and, and that happened, well, it happened minutes later, didn't it? it or, yeah. or, or might have been in the same substitution. I think it might have ended up being almost a double. So, you know, that that is a tactical decision by the manager, you know, trying to keep the players mm -hmm. fit. Um but yeah, I, I think had he had a right back who was happy to play the game and get 90 minutes in, I think Maitland-Niles would have come off the pitch. He gave the ball four or five times in succession away in the second half in decent positions where he needs to make it count to state his case. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it just didn't happen for him. It just didn't happen, happen for him in that game. All right, cool. All right, I want to move away from the Norwich game unless there's something else you guys would like to say about it. Speak now or forever hold your peace because there Thomas are quite party. a few things happening. Thomas Party, okay. Thomas Party, Thomas Party. Arsenal on, without Arsenal without him. Sorry to say, no chance. We got no chance. He just has the vision, he has the quality, and he has that mastery of the midfield. 
he can he can see things and pick things and pick people out that no one else no one else really can do. You know, mm -hmm. he comes on off the bench and he makes us instantly better, Sophie. Instantly better. And and that's why, you know, obviously we had James on last week and I've got to kill him with this as well. He he wanted to sell him Mills. Can you believe that? He wants to sell him. He wants to sell him. Yeah. yeah. He ain't even started showing us what he can do. The, the thing is as well, what you've got to understand, Kev, and you know, Kev, don't you? It's, it's, as a forward, if you come on a sub, you've got a good chance of making an impact and, you know, putting everything in, getting a goal and changing the game. But coming yeah. on as a midfield player, sometimes it's difficult to get into the game, first of all. And to, make get an the, to get the pace of the but game did, as well, he, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and like, but what he done was he come on and he brought a calmness to that midfield as well. Because players can play off him nice and there was yeah. space all of a sudden. But he's, he's got to be 100% fit all of the time. We, we've got to maximise the value out of that player, definitely. And alongside Laconga, I, I like, I'm, I'm, you know, I said it last, I said it a couple of weeks ago, didn't I, on, on the pod. It, it's it, it's, it's got to be the partnership that, yeah. that pushes that team forward. Yeah. Agreed. For sure. That's got, they got to play at Burnley. That's for sure. I mean, Maitland Mate well, Niles well, is, is fourth in line. And he had an opportunity this week to to maybe push himself into third. I think he's pushed himself out because you know he, he just won't get in that side in midfield now, and not knowing what's there and what he what he needs to bring. Yeah, I wish he would just you know. I think if he wants to be part of the team and he wants to get game time, you know, being a deputy to a Tomiyasu or being an option, you know, in 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 that defensive role more so plays well with Pepe. Pepe, I think, is a chance. But I I, I think you know it's going to be tricky uh, for well, him going have forward. Players at the club, though, so he, he, you know he could have gone to Everton. at this, at this club. It's, it's, it, it, yeah, he's gonna be he's gonna be pissed off, isn't he? If he just if he's just a fill in for somebody, he ain't gonna be happy with that really. And he's going to carry it all the way through, and you know, and then we'll see probably in the next transfer window something happen with him if if it if it goes like that. For him. So, like Newman says, why did we keep him again? Could have sold him to Wolves. He could have gone to Everton. He he came out with a tantrum, and yet once again, you know, is it fear? I mean, I don't understand then why why we're going to keep him if he's not really going to get his chances, David. Well, who knows? Who knows? We, Who knows we'll, with this guy? We'll, we'll, we'll never know. We'll never know. Real quick, in a nutshell, um, Ramsdale, were you impressed? And also um, the fans. I think the fans have been phenomenal thus far this season, you guys getting behind the team. Those two, um, I'll start with you, Hilsey. Ramsdale, I, I was super impressed with him and I'd love to see him get a run in the first team now as the number one um, choice keeper. Yeah, he looked he looked comfortable. I think, I think what was nice, the, the, the players around him, his defence really felt comfortable with him. You know, you, you could tell they wasn't nervous about having him behind them. And that, and then he gained his confidence. I think he had one little sort of block to stop early on in, in, the, in the game. That calmed him down. Showed decent bit of footwork at times. Um, sometimes, you know, a bit scary, but there you go. Um, Arsenal are always going to take them chances. But yeah, I thought, I thought he, he did well. And the thing, he, he played well, played with a smile on his face. And when he had to come and do his job, which, it, which wasn't much in the game, you've got to say. Mm -hmm. I mean, Norwich... You know, they huffed and puffed, but they didn't really blow the house down. Um, he, he, he done it. Yeah, he, he looked confident. And because the team played so high at times, you could see him there, you know, stepping out of his box and being a commanding goalkeeper, having a bit more presence. But he, he, I think he's still got to mature. I'd like to see him, you know, physically get a little bit bigger and a bit more dominant. But that, that will come. We'll, we'll, you know, again, we'll see. We'll see. David, what do you say to fans who keep saying, um, calm down, everyone, get a grip, it was Norwich? You know, you can't give anyone a compliment who played well without people throwing their toys out the pram or having a tantrum and going on the attack. Uh, I think, you know, we're rock bottom. This is what I say. We had zero points, zero goals from three games. You know, we're at right now where we're at and playing a Norwich was so important to get the win. Um, I just, Kevin and I, after the game, we were just saying, we're just happy to get the win. Let's use this as a building block. What do you say to fans who, who say, get a grip, we're still crap, this team's crap, you know, it was just Norwich. What's your answer to all but of that? For me, for me, they're not fans. For me, they're not fans. It's, it's not about that, is it? It's about, it's about the match day, being a fan. Don't get involved in the politics and where you want the club to be and who you want to be doing this, that and the other. At the end of the day, it's a win. And we, you, you batter them when they lose and you've you, you got a right to have an opinion when they lose. But when they win, just celebrate it. 
it weren't like we won and, and got battered and we won. We didn't like we didn't mug Norwich, did we? We, we didn't we didn't we didn't steal the win off them. We deserved right. the win. There's no doubt about that. Yes, Arsenal want and demand more and higher and higher standards all the time. But when you know you you've got you've got to have something, and you? you've got to have something to start from. And, yeah. I and it weren't a bad game. It weren't a bad game or a bad performance. And I, I don't really see anyone getting carried away with it. So I don't know what they're on about after these people. You know, <laughs> I, 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 com I, 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 I completely agree with you. I just think it's really cheap to kind of, you know, just take shots because uh, I just, you know, I think Udegaard looks good. I think Sambi Lakonga looks really good. I think Gabriel is so solid. I think Tommy Asu looks solid. I think Ben White, you know, looks like he's the type of ball carrying player that we want out the back. Everyone just it just wants to say, oh, he's crap in the air. He was crap at Brighton. He was crap at Leeds. And even when you point to the fact that he helped Leeds get promotion, then people say we're in the championship. Well, it's a hard league to play in the championship. So yeah. you can't win either way. And I'm not getting carried away. And people think oh, I've started to flip flop just because I was happy my team won. What is wrong with being happy that your team won when you're languishing at the bottom against a Norwich, against a Burnley, and we've got those two teams coming up, guys? Give me the player perspective. Tell me what it means to the players who care for that team who were playing at the weekend, what this what this win means to the players going forward. Sophie, it's, the, it's a confidence booster, which is what we really needed. No points, no goals, no nothing that the fan base turned over on its head. We won the game. Yeah, of course we want it to be three or four nil with goals raining in from 25 yards, etc. But let, let's, be, let's be brutally honest here. We, we are trying to build ourselves back up. And you know what? Any win would do. And any win, do, any win did do against Norwich. If we'd had our shooting boots on, the score would have been more emphatic. Yeah, and just typical Arsenal. And, and like I always say, you cannot keep the opposition out all game. They're going to have a part of the game. And what a challenge at the end by Gabriel. But this is football. You can't dominate mm -hmm. the game for, for 90 minutes. That's for sure. So listen, guys, I understand there's opinions and all that, but be, be happy. We've, we're on the move. We've got three points. We've seen a whole new back five together for the first time and what was the most important thing for us Sophie Hills we kept a clean sheet keep that clean sheet you you'll never lose especially with a new goalkeeper in goal as well and I'm sure there's been moments with you guys when you played together where you really needed a win and when you get that win David it's got to help the team spirit especially um, as we've come out of, uh, of a really bad spell. But I want you to tie that into this because I'm moving on to the next subject and I was dumbfounded by this statement and I think sometimes Mikel Arteta just doesn't help himself. And I want you guys to take me into the player mind with this response if you hear your manager say this. Arsenal boss Mikel Arteta, I'm reading from the Evening Standard, um, says this past fortnight has been his best days in football after the Gunners finally claimed their first win of the season. And I want to read this quote. I must say that probably it's been the best 10 to 15 days I've ever had since I've been in football. I'm not saying that they were the easiest, but probably the best because you have to find a purpose. Why do you do what you do? And why have you made the decisions to become a football player and coach? It's about the relationships we've built. It's about the level of trust that everybody at the club has, the connections, emotionally, how the players react, how everybody in the team um, is. And I'm talking about any department, supporters, supports, follows, and tries to be positive about the situation. You've got to win football matches, but it's a joy to watch how everyone was behaving around the context that we had around. I'm actually shocked that he thinks that this is the happiest, even though he's lifted the FA Cup as an Arsenal captain and he's played and he's he's been alongside Pep Guardiola for some glory days at City. David, yeah, can you talk I, me through yeah, this, I please? Listened, I listened with um, with my teeth like this as well when he was saying it. I, I didn't quite understand it, so I watched it again after. Um, and I, I tried to put it into perspective of what I think he was trying to say. I think he was trying to say, because it had been a challenging and testing time over this period, um, and things hadn't been good running up to it. 
I think he probably had a few meetings and confirmation of with players of their commitment to the club. He'd probably done a lot of work um, off the pitch, you know, just just doing his, you know, his thing and making everyone feel good again about the club and trying to pull everyone together. And I think he, he feels that at the end of that, with getting a you know a result, a semi result, um, I think that he it, it's kind of more important these two weeks than than the other things in his career. I know he didn't mention the you know the, the cup finals and you know taking the team and winning the FA Cup, but I, I think definitely he, he just it's just in the way he delivered it because I can't believe anyone would say that it was his best two weeks at the club. So yeah, it was a very strange statement. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to play devil's advocate here really. And, 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 and try. Well, and I want you to not play here. devil's advocate because yeah, I, 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 why, why do he and Edu feel consistently that they've got to like put the well, dirty linen out? It just, it's just so annoying and infuriating. It's to feel that underachieving is your best thing you've ever done. If that, if you're being honest, then if you want to What's say What's the honestly, mindset you know he's creating, I mean? David, what does that say about the mentality? at this club well I, I i try not to look at what it says about that i don't want to look at it too deep i try and look at what goes on on the pitch and how the players react and and deal with the manager and at the moment this group of players that he's playing are trying to play for him um but the the club made lots of errors you know the the, the edu interview by the club by the club by the actual club so did you see that one where he talks about the players mm -hmm. who'd left the club, why they'd left, his strategy, trying to explain that, you know, bringing in the youth and all that. And I, and I watched it and I actually spoke to someone at the club on Saturday and I felt terribly embarrassed because I, I, I went up to this guy who I know and I said, um, did you see that interview with Edu? Uh, I said, it was, I said, I thought it, he didn't really need to do that, did he? Did he really need to say that stuff? You know, that's not really going to do him any, any good. And he went, Oh, didn't you like it? I did the interview. And I was like, oh, and he was oh, really no. proud of it. So I, I don't know what they see with some of the stuff they put out, to be, fair, to be totally honest with you. You know, and I, I love the club. I work for the club. You know, I work for the media department. But some of the bits I don't quite understand. So with this one, I'm thinking that it's just a, it's just the way he communicates. A bit like Unai Emery. I think there's a, there's a bit, it's, it's a bit confuddled in there isn't isn't it time that that he and adu just allowed this team to do the talking on the pitch stop giving interviews i know he's got to do his daily presser after training yeah, and stuff definitely. like that but just stop talking and and let's see this team play because you could waffle on all you all you want i mean he goes on to talk about um, you know, what I'm describing is probably what you guys don't see, what's happening internally. And then I have doubts. I have questions. Like, I mean, this is this is just this is the manager of Arsenal Football Club talking about doubts, talking about. I mean, what is this fragility? What is this mental yes, thinking, it's, it's Kevin much, it's, and, it's and David? It's, just, it's too much information. You're, you're supposed to protect and hold all that back and just work with it internally. It shouldn't be. But I, I feel that there's been a pressure on the club, a pressure on the manager to to come out and make statements because of our fans react and what fans do. And our fans and forums deal with some of the situations. Like you said, we won on Saturday, but a load of people come, come, out, come out and hit us with a shit stick still. You know, it's that's what they're fighting against. And because they want to win everybody over, I think they make decisions and they came out and, and just sometimes just say too much. You know, you wouldn't get Jurgen Klopp saying that, would you? He wouldn't be talking about his team like that. No, exactly. He wouldn't. Um, I just find it. I just find it hard to believe. And I know that some people are saying, "Well, you wanted them to communicate." Yes, communicate, but not with, like weak source. They sound like pussies, to be honest with you. Well, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm seeing Bob's comment on the screen now. I'm not. I'm not criticizing Arteta. No, I'm, what I'm what I'm criticizing is the fact that that they feel the need to go and do this, you know, just, just get on with a job. You've got a win at the weekend. You've got Burnley this weekend, a good opportunity. Why can't people just get behind the manager, get behind the team? Because at the end of the day, he must be sick of that as well. You know, when yeah. well, you got to remember, board. listen, I've, I've kept quiet. I've listened to it all. And you can't, 
You can't ask for communication and then when the communication comes, you complain that it's not the right communication. It's communication. It's weak, what, what, Kevin. That, that, but that's to you. Listen, at the end of the day, the manager is under a lot of pressure, right? People will say, no, if he doesn't get the right result. Could you imagine if we didn't get the right result against Norwich, what, would have been, what the pressure would have been on him? So we 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 done a show, Sophie, and I said, this, the international break couldn't come at a better time for Mikel Arteta and Arsenal because it gives him an opportunity to get some of the players back that he needs, some of our better players. This was really important for him. And yeah, he, he, he may have, have, have flowered it up a bit, but the pressure was immense. The pressure was immense. He got players rightly back. So. It, it, no, of, of course, rightly so. But then, if it's rightly so, he then can say what he feels. He then could say, because Tommy Arsenal, remember, he signed Tommy Arsenal and Tommy Arsenal didn't even come until, what, a couple of days before, before the game. So he's got to knit it all together. He's got to put something out on the pitch that gets a win. No matter how it, it's done, he's got to get a win. And that's what he done. Let's be honest. Yeah. Yeah, that's absolutely. what he done. So okay, let's, Let me put this into perspective as well, right? You look at the two managers that were there on Saturday. So Daniel Farker and Mikel Arteta. Mm -hmm. They're in exactly the same positions in the league. They've just come through transfer windows. They've just brought new players in, into their squads, right? Arsenal, how much more pressure are they under to perform than Norwich? And how much more pressure is Arteta under to get those players in the squad performing and getting this team started as well? So he, he's not only had to deal with the team having three losses, which is poor, you know, which is poor. The bottom of the league, yeah. You've got to remember European champions and Premier League champions, though, in that. So you wouldn't have expected to win them games in December anyway. You might have took a, you'd have said, I'm happy for a point from them. So, you know, it's only because it's at the start of the season. Mm. So you put that on top of a transfer window when they're under pressure from the start of it to sign big people. And they've got a plan when they know they're not going to sign big people. They're going to bring in their young players and this little strategy they've got. He's trying to, it's been a tough, tough time for him. So getting back to his statement, I think it was based on the fact that it's been a testing period mm -hmm. for him and a challenging period. And he feels rewarded by how he has that come he through came that through it with that his they players. came through it. That's what I think. So they haven't so, come like, through anything yet. No, Kim. they haven't. They no, haven't. they have. No, no, Sophie, they have. They've, they've no, they have it, not. It, no, it might, it might not be to you, Sophie, but you're not on the inside. On the I inside. just asked you and you just said, you, you, that's my response to you. They've come through nothing. It's a 1-0 win against Norwich and it was a double post. And so, a what happens if it's, so, so what happens if it's, so they've gone, they've gone through the winning door, which they haven't done no, this I, season I'm in the league. About, I'm all about getting the win, Kev, but have, we haven't So how is it yet. not going, so, how, how is it not getting through something? Okay. You've got, yelling. you've got to. No, hold on, Sophie. You've got to, you've got to, I, what I don't understand is how you just so flagrantly say they've got through nothing. It is getting through something. It's their first game together. So, they've so, got so, through so, absolutely It's to win, nothing. Sophie. Let me, in, Kev. Let me jump in, let me jump Whoa. in. Let me jump in, let me jump in. So what I reckon is that... They, Excuse me. Hold on a theory. second. This is his first card of the season. Kevin Ooh. Campbell... You, you're going in the book. Why? That. Why? Because, Don't answer because back, you Kev. went you know over... No, you, why? You, I want to know why. I want to know why went, I'm going in the book. Went, why? You went yeah. over the decibels and nearly broke the eardrums of people and you get a yellow card, okay? Because you need to listen as well to what I'm saying as a fan. We've got through nothing yet. So, so I heard zero. what you said. Sophie, so I heard Kev, what you Kev, said. Kev, 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 Kev. What, what? I'm saying, what I'm saying is... The period we've got through, not because there was necessarily a win in this game. I was, I'm talk, I'm talking purely about Arteta's statement regarding him and the period he's come through and why it's been enjoyable. Okay, so I'm talking about the period of challenging decisions he's had to make throughout this. 
the fact that there's a win at the end of it don't mean we're through it, but it means, you know, like there's a little light down there and we're driving towards it and we can see it now. And we've got Burnley. Get a, get a win there. We jump up. We could jump up to 12th. And then what are people going to say? Two more wins. Good chance. So okay. I don't I, think I, we're I, I, through anything. Definitely not mm -hmm. through it because he's still in the shit. Let's face it. He is in it. it. You know, I know that. I've got inside information. And we just got to take it a game at a time. But we've started the process. We've started the process. And the players that he brought in have started it. They've made the difference. So the confidence can come from that. Hey, listen, I'm happy. I, I was, I've been killed for just being happy that the team won and supporting them and being happy to see Ramsdale get off to his debut without conceding a goal, seeing Ben White and Gabrielle do decent together, seeing Sambi play and be commanding, you know, see Aubameyang get a goal. But just because we get 1-0 against Warwick, Norwich, you know, doesn't mean that we've, we're, we've, been, we've gone through it. That's all. I mean, uh, no, but you, you can't, can't have a sell negative. that to a fan. No, 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 no so a negative off a positive. No, Hills, the players, Hills. Want, you to, you, the players want you to support them. So, so when you get a I win, support the players them. want I you just... to carry on lifting them. But, Not like, but hold on a oh, second to the players. Yeah, it's Look, nothing. They... It's just one win. We got, we got, we got to take it as like it's one. We haven't win. won all season. We haven't won in the league. My point is this, Sophie. We haven't won in the league. Confidence is very low. Confidence is very low. It's been a test in time. All of a sudden, there's new players. He, he changes the team as well, puts it out on the pitch. And yeah, it wasn't a great game, but we should have won by more goals. But we'll take a 1-0. All of a sudden, that gets us through the door. It's not through the problem, but it gets us through the winning door. That's the key. That's my point I'm making. No, what you said, and this is what you would do to me, what you said was we've come through it. And I'm just like, we haven't come through nothing but, yet. Yeah, we've come through and, a win against Norwich. Yeah, and then when you, if you go back in it, I said it gets us through the winning door. You go back and check it. Mm. We've Because we haven't won bit. all. No, we have. You go, you go back. You go back and watch it and listen to what I say after you say what you said about we've got through nothing okay because i know what i say that's the good thing <laughs> well i'm just <laughs> saying i'm responding to what you said and i think that this is the problem with arsenal is that we get to a point where you know we beat norwich and you i'm happy for the win but have we come through it no we got burnley now burnley lost to everton and got absolutely annihilated by a team that rafa benitez inherited and has maybe two tweaked with two or three players and absolutely smashed burnley so if we lose to Burnley, what does that mean about us? What does that mean about us as a team? What does that continue to say about it's, it's, Arteta? It's a different I'm game. Hoping... It's a different game. Let, let's deal with Burnley when we get to Burnley. But it's a it's a different game based on the fact that in order to really come through it, we have to create consistency. And we have to build and further build on that and the confidence and be competitive. You know, we've got a long way to go to just do but those we basics. We will. There's there's a week between these two games, right? There was no any problems from the game from the lads that played at the weekend. He's had a full week with them this week, or he will have by Friday. They'd have had a little bit more time together, the new players. Maybe a bit more sort of bonding. You know, he'd have probably done a couple of things where they all got together with the new lads and done a couple of things, get to know each other a little bit more. So that will bring more confidence. So, and he would have, that win, it would have been hard to do that after losing. If they'd have lost against Norwich, it would have been hard to do that. So this week, he's had a good week. He should have had a good week with the players. And that will stand him in good stead for Burnley. And that's what we've got to believe. And as players, as players, that's what we would be thinking. Because, because... See, <laughs> didn't even get a card <laughs> and he's disappeared. He's not going to go. I got the card. Don't worry about that. I got the card. But Sophie, look, I'm on here because I'm a player, right? Now, yes. in a player's mind, we know we're not through the problem. 
But you've got to go through the winning door. The That's not what you said initially, Kev. I'm not going to harp on about it. Sophie, I've, when you said we ain't through it, and I then said, you've got to get through the winning door. As I said, go back and check it if you want. We will. Because we'll put, we've, got, we've got zero points and zero wins. You want consistency. It has to start somewhere. You have to... Yes. The, the, but, but what is consistency? Consistency is keep going through that winning door. You have to keep going through time and time. And it doesn't matter how you play. You've just got to keep going through it. Resetting. Going through it. Resetting. Going through it. Resetting. That's what you've got to do. So I don't I, know how else you can do it. I've been harping on about that. When you asked me what I want at the beginning of the season, I said... You said you I want, want consistency. Mm -hmm. Consistency that, that leads to competitiveness. That's mm -hmm. it. And then the rest, let's see where we go and what we can do. Right. I hope Hilsey will be back. I want to get this in too, Kev. Uh, moving on from Mikel's happiest 15 days and the result against Norwich. Um, <laughs> Jack Wilshire has set the Arsenal um, social media sphere on absolute fire again today. And I wanted to ask you this because we had Jack on the show in August and mm -hmm. you could tell and you could feel his love for the club, you know, mm -hmm. um, and, and also his regret at moving on from, from the club too when once Unaya came and he realised that maybe he wasn't going to get the chances that he wanted. So... Um, for me, I've always thought that Jack Wilshire would be a, a good addition to the Arsenal, but under a mentorship type of uh, capacity. If anyone knows what it feels like to be um, Saka or Mill Smith Rowe, it is Jack Wilshire. The, the entire club put their hopes and dreams on Jack Wilshire. In fact, I think it's no argument to say that there was a time where the England team were going to build an entire squad around Jack Wilshire. But doesn't it go against everything the club have said to us over the summer if they re-sign Jack Wilshire on a pay or play type deal? Doesn't that just make them once again look like, what is the plan? What are you doing? It's not like Lukaku coming home or Ronaldo coming home. You know, he hasn't played competitively. And I love Jack. And the interview he did with us was phenomenal. But I can only see him come back being a mentor to these young players. What are your, what's your guys' take on this? Well, he's only coming back to train to get fit for a, for a team. That's all I know. I, they're not going to sign him, so. And I don't know where this, all this, this comes from. Because if Arsenal wanted to sign Jack Wiltshire, he'd have been signed already. So where all this nonsense is coming from, I, I just don't know. David, what do you know? What do you think about this? I've, I've, I've got inside information on this as well. I'm a lucky Look man. Look at you. So yeah. um, I'm actually playing golf on Friday with a guy who does his um, all his security systems at his house, and he's very, <laughs> very friendly with him. And he was uh, telling me about him. He, you know, he's and they're good friends anyway from back in the day. Um, and he he said to me, he's just training at the club to try and get another club. Exactly what Kev said. There's no there's no offer of pay as you play, or he hasn't even spoke to anyone at the club, and he's and he's happy. He's happy to take a championship club um, and just get back into football. He just wants to play. He wants to get fit. Um, and he doesn't, he certainly doesn't want to be someone who goes back to the club and just fizzles out at back at Arsenal. I know that for sure. That was said in the conversation. He doesn't want to be someone who goes and be, some, be a mentor. He's, he's still got playing to do. Um, you know, and he, he wants to play the game he loves and he wants to be the Jack Wiltshire that we, and he, you know, he wants Arsenal to miss him. Um, so yeah, nothing, nothing in it. Absolutely. But nothing even, even I understand like him coming back and training, but at a time when we're supposed to be real rebuilding Arsenal, I it's not even 2.0, it's 3.0 when we're trying to rebuild our DNA on our culture and move on from the Wenger era completely. What's is it even a good idea to have him come back and train? Like, why? Why would we do that? It's got nothing well, why to wouldn't do with you it. do it? It's got nothing to why do with it. Do it? It's, got, we it's, got, we it's not going to affect the DNA. Because self. look what it's Kev, look. Kev, okay, no, wait, it's not going to affect. No, no, Sophie, you spoke. And are we going to? Are you going to allow us to answer? Kev, Kev when we when it we, sends when the wrong we message the club, to who? Kev, it, how many people did we have on trial when we was even when we was in 
the middle of our almost invincible season, we'd have someone turn up at training. Yeah. So they'd say he's good. He'd come in on training on Tuesday, join in the possession, join in the drills, you know, do the training with us. Two weeks later, he might not be there. We actually had the, what was the guy's name? The American captain. Was it Alexi, Alex? Alex Lalas. Alex Lalas. Alex, he came, didn't he, on trial? Yeah. And yeah. We, 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 we didn't like him. We, we got, you know, but, but he was there for a few weeks and they just come in. They don't interfere with anything. They, they're, they're footballers. They're just part. You know, they're like part of the coaching staff or whatever. They're just someone playing football, trying to get on. Okay, my point is, okay, is that the narrative, though, in the media today and what you're seeing is everyone talking about Jack Wilshire returning. So these are the things we need to be really careful of because now there's been an entire day spent on energy put into this whole concept or this argument, people doing shows on whether or not Jack Wilshire should come back to, to the club. And what I'm saying is... Why do we put ourselves in these positions continually when the narrative now is about this, when really we should just be laser focused as a group of fans and as people yeah, in should. terms of our, our game against Burnley? It just, why do we keep turn, Sophie, we're turning back? It's the fans that are doing this. It isn't the, the, the all the club have done is said to Jack, yeah, come and train and get yourself fit. But the narrative then No, becomes, but the narrative is from the media. Absolutely. And it's a distraction. You can't stop that. No, it's, it's a, a distraction. distraction for it's not distraction, distraction for it's who? It's the media's business, ain't it? It's the media's business to create to create business. <laughs> so they have to, you know. This it, is what they do. They can pick up on it. All of a sudden, it's on twenty different platforms, and everybody's talking about it. Then that means some point in that day, someone's going to get paid for doing a show or talking about it, or hopefully, and that's that's business. People are going to do that. It's it's a market out there now. We didn't have that problem. Did we? we that, that didn't exist in our day. So we could go and do what we wanted. We could go and train with whatever club when we was between clubs. No one talked about us, really. It's, it's All right. It's just... A, I just... I'm Listen, I'm not making it up. I'm not playing devil's no, advocate. I'm, no, I'm a PR, no, you're telling, I'm a PR, no, you're telling the truth. I, yes. I'm, a PR, I'm a PR person and I'm telling you this is a distraction and it's unnecessary. The energy could be spent elsewhere. Right. I want to get stuck into this a little bit with you guys. Why is Pepe so polarizing? Why is it that a player who I've ripped to shreds as well, by the way, talk to me about playing. Who's who would you compare Pepe to when you guys were playing in a in in a team that looks lazy to everyone, that looks a certain way to everyone? But if you actually dig deep and look at his stats and look at what he's done for the team, he's actually one of our better offensive options. David, can you find me a player that you played with that's comparable? And why do you think Pepe's so polarizing? Of course, it's the 72, 72 million price tag, uh, but it goes beyond just that. I'd have to say Perry Groves. <laughs> He'll be happy with that. <laughs> no, um, I don't know really because you've got to take into account the price tag, aren't you, with with certain players and what they bring to the game. It was, I think he was probably overpriced, but it was a market. Um, I don't know, maybe maybe a, a bit better sort of Glenn Helder sort of type player. You know, little tricky skills, had a few bits and pieces, and but 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 still can't didn't forge away completely into the side and didn't have every single thing get every single thing right but still a good lively player and an entertainer someone who you look at and think he could do it if he gets it this time um plays with a lot of energy but, but I, don't, I don't really think i've seen any players that i could compare with him fully it's, it's a difficult one it's a difficult it's a difficult one because it for me he's done all right. He's done okay. He's lively at times. He works hard. He's never shirked a challenge. Um, but I don't know. Maybe you stick him in Man City's team. He's a different player. I don't know. He, is, he could is, be one of them is, players. He could be one of them is, players. Is he on your team sheet for every game? I know Kev would start him for for most games, and that he would have him because he's that threat. Is he on your your team no, sheet? No, no, hey, Sophie, think, whoa, whoa, hold on, time out, whoa, whoa. Do you know when we when we done this? Um, remember we Our done I 11. done my eleven. Remember when yeah. I done my eleven? Yeah. It was. You had it Pepe. Was, no, he wasn't. Saka was there. Right, and a lot of people did not have Pepe, but yet Pepe is the one that always puts us in a position to score. So I'm asking you guys, why is that? Why why do we see him in a certain way? It's consistency for me. I think it's the consistency. You know, I, I think 
we've seen Pepe be consistent at the back end of last season and look really good. And he's had his moments. There was, he was top scorer in the, in the Europa League, etc. He has got ability, Sophie. I think that's the frustrating thing for, for me as a, as, a, as a fan. To know he's got that ability, he should be, he should be murdering left-backs. He should be brucking them up, but he's not. I thought he started the game pretty positively, he was running at the fullback, but he didn't beat him. And that, that's, the, that's the issue. Yeah, definitely. Once he, he beats it, once he beats the fullback, yeah. then he feels right, I've got yeah. him. But if he doesn't beat him, then you start to see, mm, I'll, I'll go and then I'll check back and just pass it simple. Uh, it's, it's, it, listen, he, he's got un unbelievable ability. But just like we always say, Sophie, it's about consistency. He's got to be consistent. He's got to beat his fullback. That's what he's in the team for. He's either got to create or he's got to beat his fullback. And let's be honest, you are right when you say he's involved in a lot of our offensive positives. He is. He really is. So, again, yeah, I think, you know. I think, I think, um, Pepe, for me, you used the, the word consistency. I think he's, he's almost a consistent six and a half, seven, when you know he's got the potential to be an eight and a half, nine. That's the frustrating thing. But because he's a consistent six and a half, seven, then you always know you're going to get a few times in a game when he's going to go past people or do the right thing. But the opportunities he has in a game, he could be a nine. If he made the right decisions at the end, the end product, I think it would it would lift him com completely into the next level, and maybe justify that. But it's it's got to be there. His delivery, I mean, some you know frustrates me with corners and stuff. Mm. And uh, this this the, can't beat the near post, you know, and then can only loft it to the far post. Um, I, I think little bits of his game sometimes look a bit tatty at the end, but mm -hmm. he's unpredictable. I mean, we played with an un unpredictable player, Ian Wright, but he was clinical. Mm. Everything he done worked. The touches were right. Whereas I think Pepe's unpredictability is a bit loose at times. Um, so, yeah, for me, probably a consistent seven, which keeps him in the side or there and thereabouts in that 11. But it don't make him an, a name, first name on the team sheet in that 11. Mm. Interesting. He's such a polarizing figure. And I think it's everything to do with the fact that he's our record signing and people expect more and they want ROI on that signing. And it just uh, it's become kind of a situation for him where I wonder if he's going to be at the club long term. Um, let's uh, talk about Burnley. Um, how do we beat them, David? Well, we certainly got a defense set piece as well. Um, make sure we're tight for the counter because that's all they're going to come at us with I think um and I think it's going to be an aerial aerial battle that's all they're going to look for especially possibly thinking about you know Ben White not being the the most prolific in the air you know you mentioned it earlier but you know it's got to be something in the consideration of Burnley when they're playing against us so that will be something to but I think it's about how we play and, and go forward against them I think if we if over takes it on on board again that he he needs to lead the line make the positive runs you know m open people's eyes to where he is on the pitch by his movement i think if he can do that i think we need to start a strong midfield we need to have party and lakonga starting in there i think that's important to protect the back four and to just sweep up all the second balls in the midfield and keep the pressure on burnley um and it's 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 got to be a good perform a, a ninety five percent minimum from everyone still because we're at the bottom of the table fighting a team at the bottom. Um, but it's a tough place to go, Turf Moor as well. We know that. Uh, but I, I think we've definitely got a result in us again. And I think this week, like I was going to say earlier about, you know, the, the managers had time to bond with the players and and you know work on a few things. He would have lifted the level of confidence. And they'll be going into this game much more confident than they would have been the Norwich game, because they'd have been on, they'd have been walking on eggshells before the game. They'd have been worried, but this game they can sort of relax a bit and and get on with it. So, um, no-brainer win for me. Absolutely no-brainer win.
So are you starting the same team? What's the, what, how are you setting the team up? Is well, there I anyone think, you drop from, well, from who if, played if, against Norwich? If, if part is fit, he's got to play from the start. Um, I think ESR, it, it's a tough one. You know, if, if you're going to play him, Erdegaard and Saka with Ober up front, um, they've got to be in the side for me. Back four, I think, you know, Tommy Asu's got to start again. Play, play, the, play the same, you know, Tierney, obviously, no brainer. And um, Gabriel and Ben White, I think he's, he's got to play his, his strongest, best team. There's no there's no holding players back now. He's, he's got to go into this game fully committed. And like I said, he's had a week of, of players being fit. It, it should be fine. You know, they should be well, well, well rested and well honed for, for this game. Kev, your team smashed them yesterday, smashed Burnley. Um, would it be damning if we didn't get three points from Burnley, having seen that performance from Everton and what Rafa Benitez has been able to do there? What's the, your biggest fear about going into this particular game? Uh, well, I think that it's, it's a different game because it's away. We're away and Burnley were away at Everton. And Burnley have got a good record at Goodison Park. Let me tell you that for, for nothing. So I, I just think, again, it's the physical challenge that we have to meet. In the end, Everton met the physical challenge and then let the talent do the, the talking. And they opened them up. That's what we have to do. For me, Party has to start. He has to start. We're a lot better team with him in it. And we've got to play fast. You saw when Everton got the ball down and played fast through them, they couldn't handle it. That's what we have to do. We have to play fast and we have to play through them. And we have to have Ober on the shoulder as many times as we can so we can release him. And what we have to do is be a lot more clinical because we might not get as many chances as we did against Norwich. That's for sure. So, you know, we've got to score. Whenever we get the opportunities, we've got to, we've got to uh, score that goal because it's so important. David, um, is it possible that we could play fast, really fast through the midfield and not just rely on the flanks? I mean, everyone's been screaming for this. You saw the speed of which Everton played yesterday and a lot of the people in yeah. chat are, are asking if we can do it. Are we capable of doing that? Uh, uh, well, it's, it's hard to change a mentality when the players have used to be being more interchangeable and just fluid and moving around and taking their time and building. But certainly I think Odegaard has, has got the ability and if... if, if what I saw against Norwich when Party came on, the way he was par making them piercing passes through the lines, getting into Erdegaard, I think the responsibility then is on Erdegaard, really, because I still saw a little bit of sideways stuff, and I think it's the next transfer of pass, the one from Erdegaard, if, if that can be sharper, um, which it certainly can. We see we see glimpses of it. I think he slid Saka in at one point, and you know, he put over him when he went a little bit mm. wider. But um, we, we if, if he can really hone his skills and, and get on them passes from party sharp because party bangs it in as well it's mm. like first time two touches max and he's he's punching it in it's about that ability to turn and face the opposition rather than the arsenal way of just maybe building a little bit more in there you know because they've done yeah. it haven't they they we uh, it was funny because we're in the norwich game as well i saw several attempts to make that recreate that jack wiltshire goal um, you know, the, like the seven touch pass one when it was all the one touches against Norwich. When do you remember that one with Giroud? Yeah, pinged around. Yeah, and and I, in, in the game, I saw several times the team trying to do that when it would have been much simpler at the start of that if Erdogan had just tried to slide someone in because the spaces were there. So we need we do need to get out of that mentality of overplaying in that zone, and and for me, Erdogan is key but party is going to feed him. Hills, one okay. thing I will say is when, as soon as the ball goes into Erdegaard, we've got to have runners. Because if Erdegaard will find a runner, but what tends to happen is we, we, we stand and we wait. They support him rather than, yeah. yeah, than, yeah, than, yeah. than, yeah. than hurting the team. Because what that will do, that will stretch the pitch. Does it. Smith Rowe will run across the front, but he don't necessarily run in behind. And well, that was we need nice him behind. About, that's what's nice about Ober, and mm -hmm. that, that was what, what was nice about being when we used to play two up front, wasn't it? 
Yeah. Because one of the midfield players, even Davo, he could pick the ball up and he'd have two runners, one split in one way, one split in the other, mm -hmm. straight away, and you had a pass on. Yeah. And and I know it was a different formation, different time, different system then, but still when you broke through the line, it was that transfer of that pass and you needed people, one there, one going in behind or, you know, one coming there to open the space for him to go in across the front of the other defender. And it's difficult with one forward. So that's why we need one of those players. We need, we we sometimes need an Aaron Ramsey to go past, and you know, you know, like Barry used to even support Giroud and run past Giroud. Someone that goes past with Oba to make that double run and then give Odegaard the other option. But it's definitely in that area um, we, we need to be sharp, and we need to be sharp against Burnley, yeah, because we we won't get a lot of chances. Um, but I, I, I can't see us. I cannot see us getting defeated at Burnley. I can only see a win. We only got a point off them last season and they're definitely a tougher test than Norwich. I think we all agree on that. Yeah. Um, go on, David. I just think the mentality at the moment, they're, they're, they're looking up the players now. And I think it's it's we've got to build on it. Hopefully, you know, they all pull together for this one. And I, I'm, I'm just talking as I would have as a player with, with Kevin that side. I'd have been thinking from after that Saturday, every day I'd have been thinking about winning the next week week and putting in so much effort that week mm. to to just be the, the right be player for that team. To be ready. To be the right player for that team and be prepped. So if as long as they're thinking the same as I was and Kev was, we'll win the game. We'll win the game. What are you saying to the younger players and then we'll get your prediction uh, before uh, you hit the road? Sorry, sorry for didn't in the first bit. What what would you be saying to the younger players going into this after getting the win at Norwich? Um, if you're in the dressing room and you know you've got younger players around you, what would you be saying them saying to them after a win like that and then going into this Burnley game? I'd be saying to them expect a different game, definitely, because you you plan for the team. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a much more physical battle. Mm -hmm. You know, it's gonna be it's gonna be much tougher. So they're gonna have to be clever. And the cleverness for me in young people is in their legs and where they run and how much effort they can put in because they can drag them big old units around, move them about, you know, don't get too close to them, but but do damage, do damage at what you do. Like Emil, get on the ball as much as you can, one touch, move, get across the front line. Saka, I, I think he needs, he, he didn't have the best game, I don't think, mm -hmm. against Norwich. So I'd agree um, with that. I, I think he needs to get back forward thinking, you know, back being a bit more selfless, you know, not, not giving the ball to other people too much because when he gets in a dangerous area, we saw it against Norwich, he was cutting back and, and not running into the box, whereas before he'd been carrying it into the box. Being he's looking more for positive, a, yeah. Yeah, in those areas because he, he, that's where he's most dangerous. So and they play can't to touch your him. strengths. Yeah. Play to your strengths. And like I said, the strengths in the youth, youth are their legs, their energy, you know, I know when I came in at 20, I knew that I could play against the best players in the league like Jan Mulby because I had legs, not because I was a great player. I know I could play against him because I had legs and I could make his life hell. And that's what they've got to do to them, to them big units. That's what I'd be saying to my young players. Just run your legs off. Oh, good advice. Right. It's a shorty today. Um, we got to get out of here. Uh, we have a hard stop at nine, but we've given you a full hour. There was even one card brandished. Everyone's taken it to VAR. Unfortunately, it has not been rescinded. The yellow card stands. There will be an appeal <laughs> and we shall see what the outcome is of that appeal in on the next show. Uh, yeah, which will so, be so, so, did they say... <laughs> Did they say, did Kev say, they've gone through the door? <laughs> You're going to have to look at that, ain't you? There's not that when the well. yellow card... Because that yellow not... card might come back. If, if Kev's right, which I suspect he is, mm. then that yellow card, it he, might be... He... He, he never he never said that no. I don't believe before the card before the card was brandished the card was brandished first and then that comment came after hence okay. why it's going oh. to an appeals board um, and Ooh. I will let the squaddies decide whether or not it shall be rescinded we will find out and Mr Hillier if you badger the referee anymore right now you could find yourself in the book as well um, the, the time for defending your teammate is well and truly over. <laughs> oh.
I tried, Kev. I tried. <laughs> don't, hey, Eels, don't worry. Don't worry. I know what I said, mate. I know what I said. <laughs> Can't appeal yellow card. It's true. If it was red, you could appeal it. But this is our game and it's our show. So we're going to do what we want. So uh, we're just having fun, by the way. Right, Kev. Um, and uh, David, what's your what's your prediction for Burnley? We're going to get Kev's later on in the week. But what's your prediction? I'm going for a, I'm going for two nil. I think it will be a strong game. I think there will be limited chances, but I think we'll take them. I think it'll be like you know maybe maybe less than ten shots on goal, but I think we'll get two goals, um, and we'll keep we'll keep Burnley out. Kev, okay, you're going to keep everyone guessing until later on this week with your no, prediction. No, I'm not. I, no, I feel I feel confident. I feel Arsenal Arsenal will win. Um, um, I think we might. Not keep a clean sheet, but I think we'll win the game 2-1. All right, fantastic. Yeah, I'll say 2-1. Um, when we do the Tuesday-ish club next time, which hopefully will be next week, um, and if not, it'll be the week after, we'll sh we're just going to check with Mr. Hillier's schedule. Um, we will do a Q&A, a straight-up Q&A for both of these guys where you can ask them anything and everything. It will be absolutely you driving the content. Had to ask them about Jack Wilshire today, Mikel's comments in the media, what's happening with Pepe, and of course, reviewing that Norwich game tactically and what changed in the second half. The next show will be all you guys asking all of the questions. Kev, I hand it over to you, Mr. Hillier. Once again, thank you for serenading us with your football prowess and knowledge this evening. It's been an absolute pleasure once again. Absolute, absolute pleasure for me, squad is. Top man, Ills. Thanks again, mate, for coming on. I love this show. Sophie, hostess with the mostest, who brandishes the yellow so well. Fantastic. And you, squaddies, how much was in chat, Sophie? Uh, we had 450 tonight, Kev. So, mini oh, listen, minimum 225 likes. You know it. We didn't even get a Vinny to hit it tonight, but you know what to do. Or it's a brock your neck. Come on, guys. Look after yourselves, and we'll see you. Go on, Vinny. Go on, Vinny. Hit it. So, squaddies, I salute you. Take care. Mind the gap between the train and the platform. Please stand clear of the discussion doors. The next stop is Highbury Squad. <laughs>